Hey guys, welcome back to the Bloodshot Airbrushing RC Tutorial, The Bumble Beast. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for following, thanks for subscribing. Today we'll be applying the water-based paint. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. Uh, hope you're learning along the way. Please drop me a line if you have any questions. I'll try to get back at you. Let's jump in. I've loaded up some paint in my brush. Um, one thing I should tell you, years of experience has taught me is if you are going to be using two different types of paint, which I am, we're using a water-based paint and we're using an automotive paint with no clear coat in between to separate them, to keep them apart, do some test samples first. Don't do it on the finished product. Um, I'm sure you guys can figure out the reasons behind that. But uh, a lot of these paints react differently to one another. So in order to alleviate some potential headaches, get on another sample I mean even if it's a, a similar piece of plastic sometimes being on the same surface as whatever your product is is beneficial because even the surface might cause some different reactions here's a great picture I found here's one of the pictures we were looking at here's Aaron's original reference I like this guy for the eyes so I'm gonna play off the eyes on this dude for this one I'm going to be cutting some stencils out of my drawing. So I did photocopy it, so I have a couple versions that I can manipulate and I can play with. Alright. So I'm kind of playing with something similar to this, but at the same time, it's going to kind of match up with our racing stripes. So I do want you to see that through the glass. So I'm going to go pretty dark with it. What I'm using here, rather than a black, and I find black, when you're spraying black, you tend to get more of a dot pattern. No matter how much you thin it out, it's just the opaqueness of black. So I got a blue-purple-brown mixture that I use. It's about five drops brown, one drop blue, one drop purple, and it gives me a pretty decent gray. But the nice thing is, is it has some transparency to it. So I don't have a dot pattern. I've got a real nice fade. And you can build that up. Slow layers. Slow layers. But you can build that up to pretty much be as black as black. Alright, so I'm going to hit it. my airbrush fade the paint out to the end of the, to the edge of the glass here. All right, one side. Careful not to get her too wet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to match up with my racing stripes. Already, already digging it. <laughs> what do you guys think? Alright guys, so my next darkest spot is going to be under the eyebrows, in behind the eyes, and in behind the temples. I'm going to go ahead and peel that, and we're going to spray that. If you have what we are doing right now, something where you want the light to fight through it, probably not a bad idea to grab yourself a light. Got my handy LED, hope that's not too bright for the camera. Shine it through, see what you're looking at. I'm actually looking at that, and man, I could, I could darken those up. Cool, that's cool. This is a good time to figure it out because I haven't gone too far and even if I get some dark overspray into this area, hey, I want that area to be dark anyways. Alright, so I'm going to grab my airbrush and I'm going to start spraying. Alright. So when I'm doing my fade here, I'm going to be working underneath the eyebrows. I'm going to try to get that area dark. This is how I'm going to accomplish my, my glow, is just by going around this area. And that would be about the darkest that area is going to see is in these little corners and getting up into here. 
I'm going to have this all as a fade, so we want it to be dark under the under the main piece here, and then fade down. So we're going to do something, something like that. Because we have our stencil, all the all this overspray is covered. We get some nice hard edges. And we'll use that to our benefit. Alright, I've been spraying for a couple minutes here. So I'm going to put it down. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But I'm starting to get the gunk on the tip of my airbrush here. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a couple of those. Very carefully. I'm not pushing on it. Just using my fingers to rub it off. And then I'll even give it a pull it all the way out. Oh, ah, look what we figured out. Perfect timing. I'm out of paint. Only a couple drops at a time. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give that a couple coats until I'm satisfied with it. You don't need to watch every step of the way, so we'll come back in a moment or two. Alright guys, so I got to thinking. Um, one of those things where I've been doing this for numerous years, so it didn't even dawn on me that here I am. I'm holding the piece with one hand and I'm just kind of casually airbrushing with the other. I realize that not all of you are at that stage, so rather than continuing down that path, I'm going to set up my, my product, um, rest it up against something, I'm just going to grab some tape here, make sure that I have access to the whole thing, let me grab my brush, you know, make sure I'm not going to be bumping into anything while I'm spraying, oh, oh, we bumped into that, so, you know, set it up, make sure you're at a good angle, that you can access the whole thing, no worries, um, maybe add some air, make sure the thing's not going to blow away on you. You know, you're working with sometimes paper or stuff will blow. So, pretty happy with where it is. I'm going to use one hand to control my airbrush. Use my other hand to steady. And it's a, it's a very fluid motion. Not a lot of my wrist is moving. Not a lot of this wrist is moving. It's more or less my whole arm is moving. <laughs> sometimes I'll even get swaying the whole shoulders. Depending on how long of a line I'm trying to get. But for this area, we're just doing small little areas, so. If you watch the finger, I'm only pulling back for paint when I want paint. And this is something I don't even notice anymore, you know, 20 some odd years toying around with an airbrush, and it's become habitual it's exactly what you would call muscle memory when i'm coming back and forth my finger is just doing its thing i don't tell it to do it it does it you spend enough time and no reason why your finger won't have the same muscle memory um i love the saying it's it's coming coming back to pulp culture um 10,000 hours uh they say if you want to master anything master any tool if you want to master any trade if you want to master any 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 knowledge, anything, 10,000 hours. And you put the time in, you put those hours in, you're going to learn, you're going to master it. But with that being said, 10,000 hours, it's a lot of time. So don't kid yourself. Don't think you're going to get this all overnight. Um, you may have a lot of restarts. Um, some suggestions is practice panels. I've got a lot of practice panels that I've done. I'm digging it. I'm getting my shadow. Hope you can see that. So it's starting to get deep. I'm still thinking under the eyes. It's not deep enough. I want I want that to be almost black in the corner here. I want some dark, 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 dark. Um, actually, this is a great time to start messing around with some stencils. Um, now when I say mess around, have an idea of what you're trying to accomplish. Don't just start haphazardly be like, hey, this might look cool here. Have an idea, maybe even do a test sample. Um, 
there's a lot of stuff going on in this face, man. There, there's a lot. So I've got the option, now that I have these areas peeled, where I can go and do some subtle, you know, just some lines in the background to make it look like, hey, there's something back there. There's something that's catching some light. There's something that's casting some shadows. So I'm going to, before I go, before I go all haphazard, I'm going to test. I'm going to play around a little bit. Um, I think it would be kind of cool to give them some more some more sharp angles up in up in the temple area. So I think maybe if I just threw some shadows under something like this. Um, you can tape your stencil down. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that. Or weight. You can weight your stencil down if you got something heavy. Just so it doesn't blow away. And then you're back to using both hands. Hold up, what does that do for your piece? Yeah, yeah, I kinda dig it, I kinda dig it. So let's roll it. So, very similar to what we just did. I'm gonna grab some tape so I can two hand it. Just standard masking tape. I'm gonna have to put a bend in my stencil. It's fine, it's fine. All right, and let's see, let's see if we can't get this guy in here. I'm gonna put one piece of tape back here. And one piece of tape right here. And that'll hold that little piece in place. I've bent these guys so that they're out of my way. Trying to keep with that line right there. I think it just adds another dimension to it. And I'm gonna add some paint. Got a little wet. Drawing it with the air. All right. Let's pull that back. Let's have a look. Pretty cool. All right, do the other side. Take your tape. You pretty much know where it's gonna stick. Just flip it. So as you see, I've peeled back a couple more areas. I'm ready to get a little bit more paint in there. Got my brush handy. Presser's kicking. All right. Let's have a look. I don't think I need it much darker. Again, we're not trying to make this look like it's super deep like the one before. All right, so I think you guys at home are starting to get it. Um, you peel off a layer, you add some paint, peel off a layer, add some paint. If the layers are far enough from one another, you can do a couple layers at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna spend a couple minutes on this. I'm gonna finish her up with all my water-based paints. Um, once I got that done, I'll bring you guys back in and we'll talk a little bit more and we'll start introducing the urethanes, the automotive paints. We'll chat soon.
Now's where I'm going to pull in some French curves. I want to give some dimension to my eyebrows. So I'm just going to do some kind of like maybe even These three little, I uh, call them louvers for lack of a better word. I'm gonna cut them right out of my, right out of my paper. I could use this one for a stencil. The only reason why I'm not and why I don't recommend it is because you do have that lead that's still on the back. You can still transfer that onto your artwork. So for the. Uh, sake of keeping everything clean. I used this guy earlier for a quick stencil. I'm just going to use him again. Now the nice thing is, you can go ahead and cut the other side if you want. It's a mirror image. I actually drew one side, flipped it over, made sure it was exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out my window here, leaving some space for my stencil. first maybe even get your light if it's going to help you line stuff up now at this point you could taper down um, I'm just gonna do this for the sake of speed I'm just gonna crank her out here I'm going to the top edge and back edge to try to give it some depth. It'll all be darker, but I want it to be heavier on the top and the back. thing about doing it and reusing it, it's going to be the same on the other side. Pay attention to your gaps, do your best to make it symmetrical. You have to lift it up, double check, see where you're at, do so. You get one shot at this, do it right, spend the time. What do you guys think? Is that Transformers enough for you? Or are you still thinking that's Disney Cars? More than meets the eye. I'm not too sure exactly how Aaron's going to have this light up. If he's just going to have one light in the back. If he's going to have a row of lights in the front. But either way, we're getting that glow from the eyes I was looking for. Um, you take it away and a lot of it gets lost. Just wait till we peel the last couple sections of tape. Um... But from here on in, I'm going in with the urethanes. I'm going in with the, the automotive paint, the candy blue. And I'm going to start darkening and deepening a lot of this window. Um, we're going to actually deepen all four sides. Not worrying so much about the roof. But uh, I just want to get a deeper blue out of it. I know it looks great on camera, but it's still a little light for my taste. And I'm leaving the eyes. I'm leaving these couple sections. 
because I want, still want those to be brighter than the rest of it. This is actually going to be painted yellow on the exterior of the windscreen. And I'm debating about doing some gunmetal gray in this section. I might not. It's one of those things where, again, everything's evolving. Once I get this finished, paint some yellow, pop it in the cab. If I look at it and be like, yeah, I need something, I do it. If not, and it looks great, I leave it. Man, who, who can say there's no book that says this is how you paint the Bumblebee windshield. You're kind of making it up as you go. And that's a beautiful thing too, man. There is no right or wrong. It's all subjective. All right. Let's proceed. <laughs> How's that for a cliffhanger? All right, guys, I got to do a huge shout out to Aaron, DJ Medic of RC Sparks. Couldn't do this without you, brother. Uh, stay tuned. Like, follow, subscribe. Part three is coming up. Cheers.